Good afternoon, Julian. Here's your machine, the Rancheria Silvia. Um, in very good condition, especially for its age. It's been taken care of and uh, cleaned uh, religiously, I would say. Um, it doesn't really have any signs of rust, any sort of major dings. Only light wear and tear, um, especially around the cuff drip tray um, and maybe on some of the sides, but it really is uh, a beautifully maintained machine. Uh, I'm just going to quickly do a double shot latte on this just to show you that the machine is in fully functional condition and kind of teaching you how to use it as well because it's not the easiest machine to use especially as it's this is closer to an industrial level uh, machine and it requires industrial level understanding and operation um, as opposed to something like a Breville or a Sunbeam this is a bit more raw I would say um, it's a good thing because it does mean that the machine will produce fantastic performance and coffees and it will last you years and years. So uh, it's just over 10 years old, I think 12 years old now, um, and it looks and works like new, I would say. Um, and it probably has another 10, 15 years to go. It really is an industrial level machine. Um, not to waste your time, but let's uh, make your, co your coffee. So the machine will take about five minutes to reach temperature. So you'll see the when you turn it on, you'll see the light turn up, turn on, and that means the machine is heating. When it turns off, that means it's reached temperature. Um, this is the coffee brew button. It'll run water through the grip head. This is the hot water button. It'll run hot water through the steam wand. If you open the tap. And this is the steam um, temperature button. So if you press this, the machine will start heating to its steam temperature. Um, this machine is a single boiler, so that means you can't brew coffee and steam milk at the same time. You will have to manage doing those two tasks. Um, and a very important part of this machine is that um, it requires constant water level. So you should check for your water level every morning. Um, make sure it's got enough water to make your drink um, and it's just with, with this lid you can check the water level and fill it it's quite easy and um, you should fill the boiler and ensure that it's filled every morning or every time you use the machine so the way you do that is you open the tap the, the steam one tap and you turn on the hot water function if you see hot water coming out, that means the boiler is filled and that's good. Uh, it means it's filled with water. I recommend doing this because it ensures that the water level is high in the boiler. This is because the steam wand attaches quite high on the actual boiler in terms of the level. Um, so when you get hot water from here, that means it's reached. Uh, it's full. The boiler is full of water. If you turn it on and you don't get any water, Keep it on until you see hot water coming out. So let's say I will, for example, if I empty this. If I, em if I turn on the, the, the button and I don't get any hot water, I'll keep it running until I start seeing hot water coming out. So that I'm fully sure that the boiler is full. What does happen if, if you run the machine, if you make too many coffees without filling the boiler, for example, this happens if you steam for extremely long periods, so more than five minutes, I, I would say, if you're steaming for very long and not making any coffee in between steaming, uh, you'll risk, you'll risk um, running the boiler dry and that's not really, really not good for the machine. So I recommend A, not steaming for too long, so maybe making one or two cups max, and then going back to espresso mode, uh, which is when you turn off the steam. Um, and I, I, I highly encourage you to turn on the hot water tap every morning just to make sure that you have hot water coming out of this. Um, and if you have hot water running through this wand, that means your boiler is full, as I said, and it's safe to use in shape. That's pretty much uh, the number one tip I can give you. Um, there's other tips I can probably guide you towards. So this machine, as I said, single boiler. You can choose to start with the coffee or start with the milk. Um, I think the superior way to do it is to start with the milk because uh, when you start with the milk steaming, uh, your boiler is at 110 degrees Celsius, for example. Uh, oh, sorry, at 130, for example. Um, 
uh, or in that range, 120, 130. So when you when your steam is, you need to wait for the boiler to um, heat up and reach that boiling temperature, and then to go make coffee, you need to cool the boiler down. So let's say you start with steaming, you, you steam your milk, you're done with that, then you go on to make your espresso. Um, it's really quickly to cool this machine down. All you need to do is just to turn on this, turn off the steam button, turn on the hot water button. That will run hot water through the boiler, so it'll run actual, um, it'll run water from the tank through the boiler, and it'll cool down, it'll boil and then cool down uh, the boiler. And once you start seeing water from the steam on, that means the boiler is ready to make coffee, not st not steam milk. Whereas if you start with espresso. So if you make your coffee, you're done with your coffee, you have your shot ready. But you'll need to turn on the steam and wait for that to reach temperature. And then you can start making your milk. And I think the machine is faster cooling down than heating up, for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, so look, there, there is quite a learning curve with these machines, but uh, they make fantastic coffees. So I have uh, prepared my ground coffee. Uh, I'll be using the double basket here to make a latte. I like to start my mornings with a blank shot. So as I said, after you've ensured that I have hot water coming through the wand, good. I will run hot water through the group head to warm things up. So that includes my, my actual machine internals, my handle and my cup. So I'll just run some hot water. You can fill half of your cup or your entire cup, really up to you. Um, and anyway, for this machine, I recommend keeping it on for 20, 30, 20 or 30 minutes just to keep, uh, to, um, to help everything reach up the temperature. So now that um, the machine has been on for about an hour and the top tray is really hot. So if you turn it on in the morning, uh, make sure the boiler is filled, put your cups on top or keep your cups on top overnight. It will actually warm up your cups to, to um, operating temperature, so your cups will be nice and hot, um, ready to make a coffee. Um, or if you don't do that, I just recommend running the blank shot just to warm things up some more and warm up the cups as well. If you want to make Americanos, long blacks or brew tea for example, as I said, you can use the hot water tap. So to use that, you open the tap, you press the... Um, the hot, the hot water button and then turn it off and then close the, the thing <laughs> close the tap so that will give you straight the uh, hot water straight from the boiler bypassing the grip head so it's nice and clean I'll put this on the side there's a lot of uh, tips and tricks on this machine and a lot of modifications you can do to it um, the Ranchilla community is quite large and uh, diverse, so um, I'm sure if you need any help with, with your machine or, or how to use it, things like that, you can find heaps of YouTube videos, tutorials online for the Rancho de Silvia specifically. Anyway, here's the, the grip handle, it's piping hot because I've been running hot water through it and because it's been attached to the machine for the past hour, so it's really really hot, which is really nice. Um, it'll ensure we have the best coffees that we can. This is the double cup basket. Obviously, the single wall, single wall is a professional style, I guess. So this is my scale. I'm gonna use it to calibrate. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna use it to dose about 15 grams of coffee. Um, I've pre-ground some beans using my other machine. I'm not using the best technique here, but hopefully it should be sufficient. Ideally, you should have a, a, a grinder on the side to, to accompany your machine um, so that you can grind your coffees fresh rather than getting them pre-ground from the cafe or from the shops. Um, Yeah, that's about 15. Cool. 
Um, yeah, I don't have a separate grinder, unfortunately. I'm gonna, I have to use my other machine to grind at this at this moment. Um, so it's a little bit messy, but here's 15 grams of coffee. This basket takes 14 to 16, I believe. Don't try to push it further than that. This is the classic default uh, Italian dose. You can always upgrade your basket to fit more coffee if you like your coffee is stronger. But this is what the machine comes with. The standard 15 gram basket. Uh, your machine also doesn't come with a tamper, uh, with a metal tamper. It comes with this plastic tamper, uh, which is which is good. It can get you started. But I recommend upgrading this to a metal tamper. Um, I guess just to help with your experience. Um, oops. Double check my dose. 15 grams, perfect. I'm gonna tighten this all the way to the right. I'm gonna push it really to the maximum setting, which is, let's say about four o'clock, four o'clock here, five o'clock, four o'clock, <laughs> doesn't, um, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, it's all the way to the right. Try to do it as tight as possible, but obviously don't break your machine doing that. Um, the tighter you do it to the, the more you push it to the right, the tighter it will be on your group seal and it will ensure no leakage. The group seal on this machine has been replaced a few months ago, I believe late last year. Um, and the machine hasn't been used for the past two months. So the group head still has some life in it, but if you at any point experience any leakage from around the group head, it's probably, it's time to replace the group head seal, which usually lasts around a year or two, depending on how often you use the machine. Um, okay, so enough talking, let's make the actual coffee. So I've, uh, I've emptied the water from my cup. Um, I'm going to calibrate my scale and I'm going to press the, two, press the uh, pump button. This will run the group head, uh, water through the group head at full pressure. And I'll, I'll need you to, count, to keep an eye on two things. The way the coffee flows, number one. Um, so how fast it flows and the colour. And number two, uh, how long it does that for. So. <clears throat> I'm going to try to do about 40 grams, so sorry, about 35 grams of coffee, 30 to 35, in about 20 to 30 seconds. That's sort of the golden ratio. So if, if you've put in 15 grams, you want to roughly double that in terms of coffee, liquid coffee. So 15 grams of ground coffee, I should get about 30 to 35 grams of liquid espresso. Um, and that should be within 20 to 30 seconds. If it's quicker than that, then that probably means my grind size is too coarse and I'll need to adjust my grinder. If it's too slow, that probably means um, that probably means my grind size is too fine and I'm going to need to change that as well. That is assuming that you're using the correct dose and the correct tamping technique, I guess. So if you mess the dose up, you'll also mess the speed. Uh, okay. So I'll Oops. Make sure your steam wand is closed so that the water doesn't go through the steam wand. So I'll stop it right there. That was about 15 20 seconds. Um, perfectly drinkable I would say. This is 32 grams, perfect. So 32 grams in about 20 seconds is good. Um, it could have run a bit slower and that probably can be achieved if I made my grind size a bit finer on my machine, on my grinder. Um, but yeah, this is a perfectly drinkable shot. Actually looks beautiful uh, with a lot of crema. Mm, really nice. Okay, now onto the steaming. Turn on the steaming button and uh, wait for it. Wait for the light to turn off. That means the boiler has reached boiling temperature. The steam on this machine is fantastic. Um, it does take a few, quite quite some time, so maybe a minute or two to reach the temperature. I recommend keeping it at that temperature for a minute or two just to build up pressure. But when it does reach the temperature, it's really really strong steam. And it actually is one of the strongest I've ever seen, even on home 
uh, other home machines like the dual boiler machines. Um, in the meantime, you can probably fill your milk jug with milk. Um, so I have already done that on my personal jug. I've filled it just halfway between the bottom and the spout. So that's about standard for an Italian drink. It's a bit more if you increase your coffee dose. Um, and also <laughs> ensure you don't overfill your drip tray. The drip tray on this machine, um, you can see the level through the holes, so you can tell when it's time to empty. You don't want to you don't want to overfill this, otherwise it will leak. As you can see, it might leak into the actual base of the machine and onto your counter. So be vigilant and try to empty it as soon as you can, not letting it overfill. So I'll do that as the machine heats up. So now that the light turned off, it's reached my uh, desired temperature, which is boiling. I'll just demonstrate how, how strong the steam is. So I've got a container here. You should always uh, purge the wand before and after. So before, you should... Whoa. So purge it by running, by opening it really quickly to get rid of the cold water until you see steam. Hopefully that's, uh, that demonstrates it quite well, it's really, really strong. Um, so you should always try to wipe things and not let it stay wet, because it will make a mess if you don't, um, if you open it without the milk. So yeah, that's, that's the steam, it's really, really powerful. Um, but yeah, remember not to run the steam for too long, otherwise you risk damaging your machine and running it dry, you don't want to do that. So yeah, now that I've purged the milk wand, I'm going to use this, the regular technique for steaming, which is try to keep the milk jug at an angle, um, or even at least uh, close to the middle, and try to keep the wand close to the surface. So keeping the wand close to the surface injects and introduces air into the milk. That will give it a fluffy, creamy texture. If you do that for, long, for a long time, you will get a cappuccino. If you do it for less time, you'll probably get a latte texture. So really, uh, it's there's a learning curve associated, but it's really rewarding. So let's see what we can do. Try to spin it in circles. Try to create a vortex and spin it in circles. And then, when you're happy with the volume or the amount of air that you've introduced, raise the milk jug. And now I'm only spinning the milk, no longer injecting any more air. And when I can't touch the milk jug for more than you know, half a second, I'll stop it. That's my desired temperature. Then I'm going to purge, just to clean it up. And then really importantly, wipe it straight away. Um, grab a tissue or a wet towel. Wipe it off. Um, now you can turn off the steam button. The machine will leave, or oh, it'll actually stop heating the boiler to the milk boiling temperature, to the milk steaming temperature, which is boiling. Um, and you can leave the, you can turn off the machine at this stage and go do whatever you want. Or if you want to make another coffee or if you want to get some hot water, you'll need to cool it down. So if you want to get an empty container, for example, this bowl here, this bowl here, um, you want to, as I said, turn off the steam, turn on the water pump. This is the, the hot water button. Now, um, the, machine, the machine 
machine is no longer giving me steam, but rather it's giving me hot water. That means the boiler is back to temperature. It's back to espresso temperature, which is good if you want to use the machine to dispense hot water or to make another coffee. Um, I'm going to tap the milk down to break any bubbles, swirl it around to um, mix it up and make it more incorporated. And there we go. Fantastic coffee, just like the cafes. You can easily make um, latte out on this machine. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good one. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions or issues, please feel free to message me at any time. Uh, but, in, but I'll see you soon tonight. And uh, take care until then. Until then. Cheers.